Good morning, everyone. Just be careful with your microphone. Yeah. You can stay with your camera on if you wish. And uh, Emanuela, I guess you can begin. Yes. Well, I want just to see if uh, maybe someone is connecting. Uh, I see some other are joining us. Uh, just a few seconds, maybe to wait a little bit, everybody to be here. So welcome. And thanks, uh, and thanks for joining this, uh, this meeting today. Thanks a lot. Um, so we are here today because you have received this invitation uh, because you are part of the modeling working group of Mongoose or because you are part of the uh, experts of the Black Sea modeling community. And uh, we want to start with you to create this team together with the Ocean Prediction DCC. And um, so we are having today this first meeting team uh, to build this team. And we expect to work together uh, in an active way and uh, building together uh, this community. Before starting, maybe it's better to, let's say, say that uh, this is uh, not the main meeting of the um, uh, Mediterranean and Black Sea regional team, but it's uh, a preparatory meeting. So we would like to have a discussion with you to prepare the, the big event. And um, so we, this is a sort of a working meeting. And uh, that's why we asked uh, only one representative for institution to, to join the meeting so we can have a more uh, easy and uh, um, open dialogue and agile dialogue, dialogue with you. So we can start uh, with the agenda. Uh, you probably have seen it already. We will have three sessions. First of all, uh, some changes in the agenda. Uh, since Vanessa Cardin, uh, chair of the Mongoose, uh, is not, um, cannot join us today. She's very busy preparing. Oh, sorry, there's a microphone. Thank you. Um, but Vanessa cannot join us today. She's very busy in preparing a cruise, uh, observational cruise, and um, she apologizes. So I will take uh, uh, leading the, the chairing of this session. We will start with the first session. Uh, which will cover the presentation of the Ocean Prediction DCC regional team for the Mediterranean and Black Sea. It will last 50 minutes, more or less. Um, a second change in the agenda is that uh, we will have uh, two videos. Uh, we will start with two videos. The first is uh, with um, Alison Closen from the Decade Coordination Unit, and then one from Pierre Baurel, uh, which is the coordinator of uh, Mercator Ocean International. Then we will move to Enrique, uh, who is uh, uh, the, coordination, no, the coordinator of the Ocean Prediction DCC, who will explain uh, uh, the DCC and the existing plans. I will uh, give you some uh, information on the Mongoose role within the Ocean Prediction DCC regional team. And then Stefania Ciliberti from Nologin uh, will provide us the feedback from the Ocean Prediction Survey users of survey. And then uh, Roman Zufic from Mercator, she will present uh, um, the Atlas that will be launched uh, on ocean forecasting systems for the Mediterranean and Black Sea. Uh, then we will, um, let's say, we will talk a little prediction DCC meeting, uh, then during the open discussion later. We will move then to the session two, which will be an interactive session, and finally to open discussions. And uh, we will close the meeting around uh, 12. So um, the meeting uh, uh, is recorded and uh, just a few information. So uh, if there is time after the presentation, we will uh, give you the floor for the questions. Otherwise, we will keep the questions by the end of the, the session during the open discussion uh, so we can have time to, to interact with each other. And uh, so uh, we are ready to start and we can uh, have uh, the first video from Alison Clausen from the Decade Coordination Unit, I guess. 
Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alison Clawson. I'm a program specialist at the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. And I'm also the deputy coordinator of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. And I'm thrilled to, to welcome you all here today for this regional meeting for the Decade Collaborative Center uh, for Ocean Prediction, which is so generously hosted and supported by Mercator Ocean International. I just wanted to give a, a few words, a few opening words about the decade as a start, where it came from, why, we're, why we've embarked on this adventure, but also really the, the importance of ocean prediction and the particular importance of this decade collaborative center within the, within the decade. So the ocean decade, as we, we fondly call it, call it is, was really born out of the, the fact that ocean science and ocean knowledge are central to so many facets of sustainable development. If we're thinking about food security, if we're thinking about education, resilient cities, if we're thinking about renewable energy, ocean science and knowledge is needed for all of these facets of sustainable development. And the decade which started in 2021 is now entering its third year of implementation. And I think this centrality of ocean science and, and the need for relevant and timely science and knowledge on the ocean is, is really greater than ever. But the opportunities are also greater than ever. You know, last year it was called the Super Year of the Ocean. Um, there were numerous global conferences and meetings and convenings. This year there have been incredible advances in terms of uh, new agreements and, and, and advances on the negotiation of a treaty around plastic pollution, around biodiversity in areas beyond national jurisdiction. And there's, I think, a really strong and growing awareness of the importance of the ocean for climate, for biodiversity action, and for human health and well-being, the work of the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean uh, economy has really encouraged encouraged governments and other partners around the world to to really start acting and, and and develop tangible and actionable commitments and engagements to sustainably manage the ocean. So the ocean decade is part of all of this. It's it's part of these opportunities. It's it's really a rapidly growing global movement that's playing an increasingly important role as the engine of ocean science and ocean knowledge to feed these initiatives. For those of you who know it, I'm sure many of you do, the, the, the vision statement of the ocean decade is the science we need for the ocean we want. And the decade is, is structured around 10 ocean decade challenges, which range from marine pollution to ecosystems, to the ocean climate nexus, to sustainable blue food, but which importantly also look at some of the, the key pieces of infrastructure the Ocean Observations Network, um, looking at digital infrastructure, the, the pieces that we need to be able to meet some of these big challenges. And of course, ocean prediction is, is really central to all of this. The Ocean Decade has grown rapidly since it started, which, as I said, was in, in 2021. And it's, it's really been wonderful here at the IOC of UNESCO, which, which leads coordination of the decade to see that growing momentum. There are now 48 global programs um, that we just had our 48th program endorsed. They're working across all 10 decade challenges across all ocean basins. But there are still notable geographical gaps in leadership. Um, there are challenges in getting skills, access to partnerships, access to data, access to technology in least developed countries and small island developing states. And that's why, you know, one of the reasons why we applaud this initiative of Mercator through the, through the Decade Collaborative Centre to set up these regional hubs, because it's so important to be able to translate the global ambition of the ocean decade to the regional level and start filling some of these uh, some of these uh, geographical gaps that we're seeing in the in the decade ecosystem. So these 48 programs, we also have close to 300 projects now. And if we're going to achieve the stated aim and vision of the decade to have the ocean we want by 2030, we're going to need massive amounts of coordination to ensure that we really are having a collective impact. And from the outset, the Ocean Decade was structured within UNESCO to have a very light and central coordination structure. But the aim was really to rely on partners with deep thematic and regional expertise and networks to take the decade to a level where impact could be achieved. And Mercator Ocean International was one of the first partners to really to rise to this challenge via the establishment of the Ocean Prediction Decade Collaborative Center. And I think it's fair to say that Mercator has really become a model for others to follow through the innovative approaches that they're using to regional engagement, community creation, knowledge sharing, catalysts of partnerships. And IOC UNESCO and the Decade Coordination Unit sincerely thanks Pierre, Enrique and the whole team for their leadership and engagement in this regard. 
Now, Mercator is not alone. Um, other Decade Collaborative Centres, Decade Coordination Offices have been emerging. We now have Decade Coordination Offices focusing on ocean observing and data sharing, and both of these are actually housed within UNESCO itself. And so in this way, the Ocean Prediction DCC of Mercator is really able to play an even stronger and more impactful role by working with these other Decade Coordination Offices along the whole ocean science value chain. 2024 is going to be a critical year for the decade. It's going to come fast. We're already very, very close to uh, midway through 2023. Um, the 2024 Ocean Decade Conference is going to be a, a seminal moment for the decade. It's going to take place in Barcelona in April from the 10th to 12th of April 2024. Uh, Pre-registration has opened, as has the call for satellite events. So have a look at the uh, Ocean Decade website and find out more. And that Ocean Decade Conference, of course, is going to be an essential part of the preparation for the 2025 United Nations Ocean Conference. With the support of Mercator, uh, the DCC and other partners, we hope that the ocean forecasting and prediction community is going to be able to really seize these opportunities, uh, these events, these major global convenings that are coming up to grow and to continue to catalyze new and innovative, innovative partnerships and sustainable development solutions. So having these discussions like today at the regional level is going to really ensure the relevance, the uptake of the results. And, and this meeting is so important. I wish you all wonderful discussions. I wish I could be there with you in person, but unfortunately I'm, I'm, I'm traveling and I'm committed elsewhere. But I really look forward to continuing to, to collaborate in the framework of the, the decade with, with the team at Mercator, with the Decade Collaborative Center, and with all of you to collectively achieve the vision of the ocean decade for the ocean we want by 2030. Thank you very much. Okay, so after this very nice and uh, useful uh, presentation of the Ocean uh, uh, Decade Collaborative Centers and uh, messages that we have from Alison for, the, for our regional team meeting, maybe we can move to the next video, which is from uh, Pierre Borel who cannot be here today, but we have uh, also a message from him. Yeah. Dear colleagues, dear friends of Ocean Prediction, I am Pierre Bayurel. I'm the Director General of Mercator Ocean International, which is the organization that has been interested by IOC UNESCO for the implementation of Ocean Prediction DCC. I'm fully convinced that this is timely, this is necessary to deliver as one, as one community, worldwide community for ocean prediction. And we are ready with, we were ready with Enrique Alvarez Pantul, the technical coordinator of the DCC, to fight for this, to work with you. But we were not prepared to receive such a response from you, from the community about the appetite for doing more. So yes, we will do that. I have the feeling, and more than that, that there is something happening in our community of ocean prediction. Political leaders, they have decisions to make for the ocean, and they turn to us. They, they are looking for the data, they are looking for evidence, they are looking for this digital oceanography, the modeling, the prediction, to explain more. And we are there, and we, we are ready to deliver. And we are more impactful than we think, and more organized than they think. So this is exactly what this Ocean Prediction DCC is about. Organize our community, make it clear, visible, and impactful, and be ready to deliver as one at the end of the decade. But we will do more, and every, every year we will deliver, and we can trust Enrique for this, to steer the, 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 our group to really deliver. And this year, we want to deliver two things, a map and a plan. A map to put each of us on the map and be able to identify who is where and what are the best practices for your region to share them with the other region and the plan to explain what we want to do all together the standards the technical background that we want to share and how we will deliver as a community a map and the plan and something which is very important is that this ocean prediction dcc is a collaborative centers it means that this is a bottom-up approach we will work from the programs of the UN decade, this fantastic momentum that has been creating with programs that are gathering the projects and the actions. So we will play with the program leaders and the, and the teams to uh, 
identify what is mature to organize this community and we will play with the regions with your region because we do believe that the best experts in your area is are you so we want to understand from your region what can be shared with the others how we can work together to deliver as one in this ocean prediction this is so i wish we wish you the very best for this meeting and um, trust enrique for the rest of the um, of the meeting thank you very much okay so so pierre has uh, launched the floor to enrique so we trust enrique for this presentation on the ocean prediction dcc and uh, please enrique the the floor is yours and we wait for your explanation on, on the plan and the description of this uh, ocean prediction dcc thank you very much i hope you can hear me and you can see the screen i think this is the case yes can you I move to presentation mode and ready to ready Perfect. to go for an overview of what ocean prediction of DCC is and how it connects with the regions and how it connects with the Mongoose Modeling Working Group and why we are having this initial uh, working meeting. As uh, was uh, mentioned by Manuel at the beginning, this is not the first uh, large meeting, but it's a preparatory meeting of the of the event that will take place. Uh, after the summer, coinciding with the Mongoose General Assembly. So first of all, uh, linking with what uh, Alison explained and linking with what Pierre explained, uh, what is our position in the decade? What is our role in the, de in the decade? You are hearing about these DCCs and probably you hear also about DCOs, which are very, very similar things, I have to say. We are not entering into the distinction of what is DCC and DCO. And if you look into the decade implementation plan, you will find basically two main blocks. One is the governance and coordination framework, and the other one are the programs and the associated projects. So in this framework, we have the decade coordination uh, unit, where Alison is a deputy a leader. And this is the direction of the decade. This is uh, the unit that is in charge of steering the whole process. And then on the other side, you have the programs with uh, its uh, associated projects. You know that each program is trying to find the resources for launching the different projects. And you have many well-known names like 4C, like Dito, James Ocean, Coast Predict, very well-known, Ocean Solution. All these programs have a connection with ocean forecasting. They are related to ocean forecasting. So the uh, worry of the decade coordination unit is that these programs are delivering by the end of the decade something that is coordinated and something that is that will survive the decade, that will have uh, its own weight and will survive uh, the, the decade. So this is exactly the role of the decade collaborative centers and the decade collaborative offices. It's collaboration, ensure the collaboration, monitoring, and coordination of all these uh, programs. So the, there are several DCCs and DCOs. Very relevant to us are the DCC related, uh, the DCOs related to uh, ocean observing, data sharing, and coastal resilience. So these will talk to each other and will together uh, do this work of collaboration, monitoring, and coordination of the, when I say coordination, literally it's a soft coordination work. It's not a, a top-down approach, but it's a soft coordination work of these uh, programs. So in, to be more specific, what we pretend to do with ocean prediction DCC, what is our vision? Our vision is summarized in this slide. This is the ocean forecasting we have today. We have been working in these systems for 20 years, so we, have, we are really proud of what we have achieved. They are useful systems, but we have to admit that these are partially disconnected services. That means that we are not delivering as one. We are not using common tools for validation. We are not using common tools for implementation. So that means that it's very hard to implement one of these systems. And that means that there is very little of them in countries with less technological advanced uh, level. So in developing countries, we have poor presence of these, of these systems. So we want to move from this scenario to this other scenario by the end of 2030. And this is a scenario where uh, 
there is a community around ocean forecasting and uh, we have con a connected uh, services. We have the services are connected both in the human point of view with a community and with a technical point of view. And here it will be very important the arrival of the digital twins for, for this. That will mean that we will have many more robust systems around the world because they will be more easy to implement and they will be more easy to operate and they will be connected and using uh, common, common tools. So this is the vision. The vision is to do a transformation from one scenario to the other. How we are going to try this? We are going to do it uh, under the decade. So captain is the UN Ocean Decade. Um, the actions, the decade action, that means the programs and the projects that I mentioned before, are the ones that are going to be our engine. And also the arrival of the digital twin of the ocean will be important, if, for example, in terms of interoperability and things like that. Who are going to do this transformation? It is us, it's the Ocean Prediction DCC community that is being organized through the regional teams. And our role is set the course, is be the inspiration from moving from one scenario to the other one. So our role is the one of navigator. We have two pillars to achieve this transformation. The first one, and maybe the most important one, is the community we are building, a global and transversal community. We are doing this community, we are organizing this community through what we call the regional teams that will be in charge of promoting the implementation and use of ocean forecasting systems worldwide. We have taken the best of the uh, UNEP uh, structure, the, the best of the GOOS structure, and we have built our own regions. We have built nine regions, and we are in the process of constructing the regional teams on these uh, regions. And the meeting of today is exactly about that, about to start working uh, on this regional team for the Mediterranean and Black Sea. Once this will be formed, uh, our target is to have this completely formed by the end of the year. Uh, these structures will be our boots on the ground to work in several aspects. First, to identify and attract a wide community. And here we want to go out of our, out of our usual box of scientists. We want to include users, we want to include private sector, non-governmental organizations. So we want to think really outside of the box in this community. Of course, our role is support decade actions related to ocean forecasting, such as cost predict or 4C or DITO. Uh, identify gaps and ways forward, work on capacity building activities and capacity uh, and ocean literacy activities. And finally here, there are many more, but in this slide, finally advocate for the implementation of best practices, standards and tools. And this is something we are going to, to I'm going to explain in more detail when I explain the second pillar, which is the technical pillar. So, these this regional teams, how we are organizing this, we have an instructor which is equivalent for all the regions. We have a steering a regional focal point that in the case of the Mediterranean, we have chosen the Mongoose Modeling Working Group as focal point. And I will explain why we, we took uh, this decision. And then we will have a steering team. The steering team will be formed by a, a set of person, a group of person with the same speciality, the same, that they are leaders, that they are, they are experts on the same topics in each region. So by having these same uh, experts on every region, they will be able to talk to each other and we will be able to create a global network to address all the issues that we want in the framework of this transformation. So it's a regional focal point which uh, we have identified as the mongoose, uh, for the case of the Mediterranean, in every region, there's a different approach. In the case of the Mediterranean, is the Mongoose Modeling Working Group. I will explain why. And the steering team that in the case of the Mediterranean is still to be formed. It's still to be decided who is going to be, to be there. So why, why Mondelli is uh, uh, Mongoose Modeling Working Group as focal point of this regional team? So Mongoose Modeling Working Group, it, it's all about also empowering the, model, the Mongoose Modeling Working Group. Mongoose Modeling Working Group is basically in charge of developing state-of-the-art science and application at the coastal scale at the Mediterranean, and also at the regional scale, I should have uh, said here. So what we are trying to achieve uh, with this, with this uh, new role, we are going to extend the capabilities of Mongoose Modeling Working Group 
thanks to the participation in ocean prediction this is why we are doing that well, how we are doing this well, first of all uh, that will allow allow mongoose to participate in the collaboration structures of the decade remember my slide about where the dcc is so mongoose will have a role now in this collaboration structure which is a very natural position for mongoose to be so this is somehow empowering and giving a, a, an a, more important role to the mongoose and specifically to the working group. We are going to link with additional sectors beyond science communities. So this is an extension of the natural playground of mongoose modeling working group. We are not only staying with, the, with our scientific community, but going beyond that. We are going to provide a series of tools for uh, ocean developed by Ocean Prediction DCC that could be used by the Mongoose Modeling Working Group community. The Atlas, the Forum, I will, there's a, the presentation by Roman later that will explain all these things. Then it will be established a peer-to-peer -peer connection with the regional teams of other parts of the world. Remember the, this structure of the steering team where everybody can talk to other parts of the world having the same role. We will uh, work on the, I will explain on the second pillar on this, a common agreed architecture for forecasting system that will uh, also uh, support the Mongoose uh, modeling working group activities. And we will participate in future capacity development activities that are still to be defined and where we will count with your, with this community. So this, this is the idea is that uh, by doing this, we will add an extra layer of uh, to the Mongoose modeling working group and we will not reinvent the wheel. We know the science is there. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to look to another place. We want to acknowledge that the science is in the modeling working group. We are just adding an, a, several extra layers to, to this science. So this is why we think this is a good idea. So what is the situation uh, with respect to, to all this uh, community we are building? We are advancing uh, at different uh, speeds, at different regions. Some of the regions will have gone very fast. This is, let's say, the, the test, the steps that we have, we want to have finished before the end of the year, chair assignment, contribution to the technical teams, depth of reference, or in your in case, we have called this a collaboration plan a updated and approved, kick of meeting, and steering a, a group ready. So this is this is going well in different regions. And more regions, we are going a little bit more slow because it's being more difficult to find uh, the chairs or just for, for due to pure bad luck. But we are advancing in general really, really well. This is, as Pierre said, uh, the reaction to, to this initiative has been incredible. We have all, almost 1,800 persons registered for the kickoff meeting, which was unbelievable, which was incredible. So there's a big appetite about this initiative. And we are so happy about that. We are going well on, on this, and the METSI is going well on this uh, building of these teams that we want to have finished worldwide by the end of the year. Finally, the second pillar, we are not talking much about this today, but we will have a presentation by Stefania about the, the first results of this technical pillar is a technical joint global uh, framework. We have this problem that uh, I explained at the beginning, very nice systems, but somehow disconnected, difficult to implement, difficult to operate. And this is almost impossible for a developing country to operate uh, those systems. This is the reality. So no, during, during developing and during exploitation, we have all these problems. We have the opportunity of the decade as a game changer. So we have, uh, we want to, uh, to develop this new scenario by making a use, let's say, of the decade opportunities and the opportunities derived from the digital twins. Uh, for example, those advances in interoperabilities with the data lakes. How we are going to, to start walking in this direction? Uh, this is a very difficult task, so we, we will go step by step, and we are starting to move in this direction. So towards a solution, not a solution, but towards a solution, is to build an ocean forecasting of the same team. This is a team that we have created with 40 experts, uh, very relevant experts of all the continents, of other regional teams, uh, that are already working hard in designing a new architecture, including that will be uh, defined by standards, tools, and best practices to be implemented 
in comparison, in comparison with uh, obviously the, the programs. So hopefully if we finish this, this uh, new architecture, this design, uh, the results, these standards, tools, and best practices that we will identify as needed will uh, inspire the CAPE programs for the development of these uh, tools. So this is how we have just started to work in this direction by with the creation of this ocean forecasting co-design team that is now starting to work. And the idea is that uh, this will uh, define the standards, tools, and best practices that will be required to do this change in paradigm. This is the this is the view. So as conclusions, ocean prediction this is a, we hope it will be a key element for the ocean prediction we need. We are building on an active community of users, scientists, and policymakers. We want to have additional focus on developing countries. We are addressing the uh, decade framework and the arrival of the digital twin of the ocean to join and deliver together worldwide. This is the vision. And why collaboration with Mongoose Modeling Working Group is a natural approach? Because we are not reinventing the wheel on the technical side. It will not be, uh, let's say, elegant or nice if we start from scratch without acknowledging uh, that the technical side is already well organized in the Mongoose community. We are expanding this modeling working group to completely new capabilities. We are contributing to improve the position of Mongoose in the framework of the, of the decade by doing that. And after this, I hope you will be able to understand better our model in the world around ocean prediction. So thank you very much. And I don't know if we are right with the timing. Maybe we can leave the questions because I, for, the, for the joint uh, discussion. Yes, Enrique, thanks a lot for the presentation and for oh, no, you are you're muted. Okay. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, now yes. Okay. So thanks a lot, Enrique, for the presentation and all these clarifications. I guess there will be questions for you, but better to take them uh, at the end of this uh, session during this discussion, since we are already a little bit in delay. I will now move to uh, my presentation. Hope you can see it. Okay. And I will, yeah, complement a little bit what has been already said by Enrique. He already mentioned the importance for the Mongoose World Modeling Working Group on being part of the Ocean Prediction DCC regional team. I would give just a brief recap. Uh, last year, um, two new chairs have been. Uh, elected as Mongo's working group um, for the modeling working group, uh, it's me, uh, I work at CMCC in Italy, and Frank Numa from CHOM in, in France. What we have done up, uh, up to now, we have tried to update the list of experts that we have uh, uh, since uh, last years. And uh, now we have a list of uh, 75 experts and what we have tried also to do is also to engage experts uh, on the Mediterranean Sea um, modeling uh, community, also external to the Mongoose community. So also from institutes which are not yet part of the Mongoose, but maybe will be uh, engaged very soon. So we are from 12 countries around Mediterranean Sea and from 44 institutes up to now. And uh, you recently received a request for updating this list of experts, uh, suggesting also other experts, uh, and also providing us with some uh, information of your field of expertise, um, with the information that we have achieved uh, so far. Um, this is a, a little bit of a recap. We try to, to see uh, where we are located. So, most of the experts of this uh, working group uh, are dealing with the circulation hydrodynamic modeling. Um, we have also more than 25 people working with wave modeling, uh, around 12 on biogeochemical modeling, and uh, a few also uh, dealing with the climate modeling. Most of us are working with regional local area modeling uh, systems. And we have a, a, a huge community of uh, coastal modelers. Um, and uh, 
people working on downstream services. Most of us are, uh, uh, let's say, producing operational uh, data. So meaning that we are in charge of uh, um, operational forecasting systems. Um, we have a lot of experts also uh, dealing with capacity building and ocean literacy. And of course, uh, on the digital ocean, which is an emerging, let's say, field in the latest years. And several of us is also working with uh, uh, policy and legal aspects. So we cover a, a very large uh, variety of uh, fields of expertise as a group. Um, so uh, the collaboration between Ocean Prediction DCC and Mongoose, as already mentioned by Enrique, um, Mongoose, uh, our working group uh, will play a, a key role within this regional team of the Mediterranean and Black Sea. Uh, and the, as you mentioned, it's uh, natural since we are already a large community of major experts in the modeling uh, tasks around the Mediterranean Sea. We are coming from different fields of, of expertise and we also have a long history in exchanges and collaborations among us since Moon and then among us. And um, we have uh, regularly uh, meet uh, and uh, so that's uh, that's why <laughs> we are here up to now we have done uh, already several uh, um, activities we had uh, some short-term collaboration already first of all we have uh, provided uh, together with Enrique uh, a collaboration plan which is within ocean prediction and, and mongoose that has been already presented uh, to the Mongoose uh, Steering Group, uh, composed by uh, Vanessa and Karim, who are uh, the chairs of Mongoose and the uh, chairs of the different uh, working groups. We have already uh, collaborated with uh, Ocean Prediction in order to prepare the Atlas, uh, the Atlas that uh, uh, will be launched, I guess, uh, very soon uh, in summer or just after the summer. And thanks to this, we would like to uh, update our modeling database um, in order to, uh, let's say, substitute the one that we collected several years ago um, in terms of institutes, in terms of uh, modeling capabilities and the coverage of our uh, forecasting systems. And we are here today in order also to prepare the, the, the big event, which will be together with the Mongoose workshop uh, in autumn. Uh, for the regional team of the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. So going a little bit more into details, you should have received already the collaboration plan uh, between Ocean Prediction and Mongoose. And uh, a part of it is uh, related to the, uh, let's say, um, members and activities of the regional teams. This is um, to explain you a little bit more uh, how uh, we will, uh, let's say, uh, contribute and participate. Um, first of all, the regional teams are open to a broad participation of membership uh, of the region. And it's composed by representatives and contributors. And representatives uh, would come from uh, um, experts in OSHA forecasting in our region, and each institute will contribute uh, would contribute with one representative uh, who is going then to participate in the formulation and the implementation of the regional activities. Of course, uh, representatives uh, and uh, their institutions, institutions uh, will benefit through participation in uh, joint publication and also possible future projects. Then we have contributors that instead could be experts but also end users or any individual with a knowledge or interest in ocean forecasting. Um, contributors will uh, support gaps and, uh, and needs detection activities will bring so the voice of the experts and the users to this organization. Of course, they will benefit from interaction with the representatives uh, and also from the capacity development and ocean literacy activities that uh, are the main goals of, uh, of the Ocean Prediction DCC. The governance uh, um, of the regional teams uh, is based on activities of a regional focal point and the steering group. 
Enrique already said that the Mongoose the Modeling Working Group has been invited to have the uh, role of regional focal point, and uh, we already explained why. Um, this focal point will have uh, a chairperson which, who will be responsible for the overall functioning of the regional team and for the communication between uh, the Ocean Prediction DCC office in Toulouse. Uh, it will last for three years and will be selected by the representatives between different institutions uh, with activities in ocean forecasting. We will declare their interest in having this role. Then uh, there is the steering group. The steering group uh, um, would organize activities and ensure the connection between the different regional teams of the uh, nine different uh, regions that have been um, mentioned before uh, and with the technical team. These will be uh, topic leaders in different uh, fields, uh, ocean observing. And here, uh, let's say, uh, we mean modeling experts who have uh, uh, expertise in ocean observations. Then ocean forecasting, uh, physics, which include hydrodynamics, waves, uh, then biogeochemistry and climate. Experts uh, uh, on downstream services and uh, on capacity building and ocean literacy. Then also on digital ocean developments, uh, which includes also the digital twin and uh, uh, leaders, topic leaders in policy and legal aspects uh, in the region. So it's important, of course, to have this uh, steering team because uh, uh, it will build a global network of uh, topic experts. So there will be the chance to interact with the steering team of uh, other regions all around the world. Uh, this steering team will act as a focal point in the region, of course, and uh, will engage in networking with other regions uh, and experts of other regions. Uh, we will have the chance to bring uh, new ideas to support the mapping of ocean forecasting and, um, of course, to, to start and support the gaps and needs detection. Uh, the steering team will uh, also contribute to the communication and to the forum uh, of the ocean prediction. Uh, we will have the chance also to expand our community in, in the sense that we will have a, a broader visibility and also support the capacity development and ocean literacy. Last uh, slide, which uh, uh, we would like to show you is um, this announcement that you should have received from Vanessa already an email uh, for the next uh, 2023 Mongoose Workshop and General Assembly. It will be a meeting focusing on ocean forecasting. So it is uh, the major relevance for the modeling working group. We will uh, be asked to be active in proposing abstracts and, and discussion, and, um, and we'll cover all the value chain, not only the uh, scientists, but also we would like to include users and uh, stakeholders, so not only science. It will be held uh, in November 14 to 16 in uh, Tanger, Morocco, and um, it will be hosted by the University Abdel Malek SD. And this is the first time in an African uh, country of the Mediterranean Sea uh, since the beginning of Mongoose. So it's uh, a very nice opportunity for us to start uh, uh, interact more and uh, engaging more than on North African countries. Uh, but the main message here is that the, this will be uh, not only a Mongoose workshop, but it will be uh, a joint uh, uh, workshop and meeting together with the Ocean Prediction DCC uh, regional team for the Mediterranean and Black Sea. In addition to that, uh, there will be a specific session and applied uh, session and, and so on, on a seamless project. So maybe we will have time later to discuss more and. Uh, uh, if you have questions on this uh, during the open session. I close here. And now 
I give the floor to Stefania Ciliberti from Nologin. She will uh, tell, uh, tell us uh, uh, the information derived from the user survey that has been launched by Ocean Prediction DCC. Thank you, Emanuela. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Stefania from uh, Nolog in Oceanic Weather Systems, and on behalf of uh, Jay, Kirsten, and Enrique, I will present you uh, some results about our analysis uh, on uh, the experts and then the user spots that we launched uh, in the last uh, uh, months in the framework of the ocean forecasting co-design team that was uh, uh, before introduced uh, uh, by Enrique in his presentation in as part of the, uh, let's say, activity on the uh, ocean prediction BCC. But uh, now let's focus uh, uh, on the polls that we have uh, submitted to experts and end users. So the first set of polls uh, called the diagnosis and applications have been uh, uh, shared uh, within the experts that are part of the ocean forecasting co-design team. And the main objective uh, was to uh, get from them uh, a experience-based but highly qualified uh, evaluation on the capacity uh, of today operational ocean forecasting systems in uh, providing a solution through essential ocean variables uh, from global to regional to coastal scale. Uh, we uh, proposed to the experts uh, a specific question asking to provide, uh, let's say, a, let's say uh, this type of evaluation with a score rating based approach from one to 10, focusing ma mainly on uh, four major ocean forecasting properties uh, related to existence, quality, accessibility, and timeliness. 48.8% of the experts uh, gave to us an answer, and uh, uh, these results have been elaborated, and soon I'll show you some uh, significant charts. The second set of pool has been uh, instead uh, uh, submitted to end users. So for us, end users are the ones that uh, basically from public institutions, but also academy or private companies, are accessing forecasting services for their uh, applications. And again, here, the main scope was to explore the degree of satisfaction uh, with uh, today available uh, operational forecasting services and catalogs, sorry, and uh, uh, with the products uh, uh, derived from these services. Also, in this case, we provide uh, uh, direct questions to them with open answer and uh, uh, rating-based uh, scale approach for testing, uh, I mean, measuring their evaluation. Uh, considering four, five main operational forecasting properties, which are accuracy, reliability, timeliness, accessibility, and usability. And we got 164 uh, answers from them, which is quite important number. Now let's go uh, more in detail about the outcomes from the experts uh, poll. Uh, uh, in particular, this one is diagnosis. So the main questions, uh, question that we submitted to the experts is to evaluate based on their, their knowledge and experience from one to 10, how now cast and short middle term forecast provide a solution at global to regional to coastal scale. We also asked to categorize, to focus their uh, evaluation on uh, five major, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, operational ocean forecasting properties, which are existence, quality, accessibility, and timeliness. So if an, uh, this specific system exists, how is the quality, how easy it is to access them, and uh, the timeliness associated to the products. And the results are quite uh, interesting because uh, uh, the experts uh, uh, basically gave to us an important indication on how, uh, let's say, they are satisfied about the today offer in blue and white ocean in terms of essential ocean variables. We, of course, provided this uh, subset list of essential ocean variables to target the evaluation. This satisfaction is quite evident from uh, uh, global to regional scale, but when we go towards the coastal scale, uh, scores, uh, average scores starts to become a bit lower. Uh, let's say the main message is the fact uh, is the fact that uh, of course we know that there is a quite uh, important uh, R&D activities around the coastal community, but in terms of operational systems more is going to be uh, to appear in, uh, in the community and uh, uh, together we of course uh, can uh, let's say improve uh, the value chain also to target specific uh, service uh, at uh, coastal region. 
Uh, regarding uh, uh, waves uh, uh, variables, they are quite well positioned in their, uh, let's say, perception, while if we look uh, on the green variables, uh, particularly for biochemistry and biology, the level of satisfaction starts to decrease, I mean, meaning that, uh, again, also for these components that are recognized as pillars, in the uh, next generation of forecasting system, we need, uh, uh, let's say, to uh, uh, strengthen the effort and uh, provide new solutions to the users. Somehow, this uh, type of, uh, let's say, this spread in the results uh, is also shown in this uh, histogram that specifically for the coastal scale uh, wants to provide you, to present you the total number of answered, uh, answers uh, uh, the experts provided to evaluate operational ocean forecasting properties, uh, the four that we have, uh, let's say, uh, proposed to the experts. And in particular, 58.5% of them uh, consider, um, let's say, the existence of uh, uh, coastal systems uh, uh, quite, let's say, uh, that needs to be improved somehow. And this is where uh, ocean prediction DCC is going also to contribute with uh, uh, best practices uh, in uh, uh, understanding how and the complement the way we are uh, going to set up uh, new systems at this specific uh, scale. And somehow the existence is also correlated with the quality and uh, the I mean the, 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 the level of accuracy that such type of uh, uh, essential ocean variables at high resolution uh, scale are going to uh, serve the community. The application pool, that is the second one, instead uh, wants uh, to make, a, let's say, a photo on the perception from the expert's point of view at different scales, from global to regional to coastal scale, on the usage of essential ocean variables uh, for a specific list uh, of uh, uh, um, applications that we submitted. Let's try to read these uh, maps uh, uh, shown in the top panel from left to right. We can see that at global scale, the experts consider that uh, blue and white ocean variables are very important for serving navigation, search and rescue, and in general, the blue growth sectors, as well as uh, um, ecological and biological applications. When we move to regional scale, physical variables are uh, uh, starts to take uh, much more importance and fundamental for all uh, the listed applications, so uh, somehow touching all of them. But when we go at coastal scale, we can see really how the map is saturated, meaning that we need uh, to provide uh, high resolution products uh, for uh, the uh, major sectors, uh, for blue society, blue economy and blue growth at all. Uh, now, somehow, this uh, um, analysis from the expert's point of view is complemented by the uh, uh, investigation that we made for, for, with the end users. Uh, so we submitted the second specific survey to end users, so it was open to uh, end users community, and we asked in particular which applications uh, they, uh, basically, uh, these final users are developing and uh, uh, for which uh, ocean forecasting services are very useful. And this map uh, somehow wants to show you really the level uh, um, of um, uh, the international context where we are operating. We got quite high, uh, let's say, considerable numbers of, uh, of answers from uh, uh, China, for instance, uh, uh, Japan, US, but also Morocco, Nigeria. Uh, Europe, of course, is well represented here. And in particular, the uh, answers uh, have been, let's say, linked to the specific applications that uh, uh, such users are developing. And this is uh, a, also a, a way to, uh, let's say, understand how we can benefit from the feedback from these users and uh, the results that we uh, are currently evaluating are giving to us many um, uh, points to, to understand and also to uh, refine the design of the value chain for the next generation of operational forecasting system. Let's now know more about these end users. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning that we got 164 uh, uh, valid answers, which is quite, uh, let's say, impressive, considering that we, sub we maintained open this survey for one month. There is a very good uh, representation for public institutions, but also a good percentage of uh, end users for, from the private sectors that are uh, somehow involved in the key applications uh, uh, in the blue growth. So here, sorry, you can see 
the number of entries per specific uh, application. And here, the, ma the main ones are, let's say, the major number of uh, entries are related on uh, applications in the field of disaster risk reduction, but also water quality, fisheries, uh, and uh, ecological and biological application. Similarly to the experts pool, we uh, provided also here a map, uh, an instantaneous of the uh, qualitative perception of the end users uh, in understanding, I mean, in uh, evaluating the availability of essential ocean variables with respect to five major operational ocean forecasting system properties, which are accuracy, reliability, timeliness, accessibility, and usability. And the map uh, here is uh, showing the values from five to 10, just uh, for a matter of representation to, to better read this, this map, because uh, differently from the experts user, in general, we can say that the end user have a quite uh, a good perception on the today offer in terms of operational forecasting system, particularly for biological variables, uh, they are quite, uh, uh, let's say, positioned uh, in the uh, middle level of satisfaction with uh, um, uh, eight uh, around a score, uh, average score of eight for biochemical variables uh, in part timeliness. So the meaning that somehow the services that today are available at worldwide level are providing a solution for uh, supporting uh, marine ecosystem health uh, uh, and in general marine uh, uh, applications uh, in in the sphere of uh, biochemical and bio uh, and biological uh, uh, fields if uh, we look on physical uh, uh, variables, such as currents and temperatures, they are quite uh, as well, well positioned with uh, uh, meaning that the users are quite uh, satisfied. Uh, and so uh, in average, uh, the, the um, uh, scores spans from uh, seven to, uh, from, from 6.5 to seven. So we are well, uh, uh, let's say, uh, per the, the perception of, from, from the end user's point of view is quite, let's say, positive, uh, if we can make a, somehow a sort of a conclusion. And on the left, you see an Instagram, a typical Instagram that we are also evaluating in the total number of provided preferences uh, for, in this case, for temperature per application. Also, somehow to justify and uh, better evaluate this uh, average score that we provided in the map. Uh, you see, if you have in mind the previous chart related on the experts, here you can see uh, that uh, the, the opinion of the end users is totally different. I mean, it somehow confirmed this positive uh, perception from the end user's point of view in the way the operational forecasting uh, systems are serving uh, their uh, applications in terms of availability and accuracy. So more than 90% of them can be considered moderately to uh, uh, very satisfied about today offer. So some preliminary conclusions, preliminary because we are in a phase inside the uh, ocean um, forecasting co-design team to uh, consolidate these results and uh, also understand the, uh, the, the balance that the experts and the user are providing with their answers. But to make some conclusion, experts uh, uh, pool reveals uh, a critical awareness on quality and accessibility, especially because experts know that uh, uh, there is a, a huge, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, le a huge action uh, that can be done from the uh, system and service evolution point of view in improving uh, the offer and in particular uh, the accessibility on biochemical and biological variables, as well as availability of essential ocean variables at coastal scale. That, uh, from the operational point of view, in general, considering the feedback seems to be not at all sufficient, but without minimizing, of course, the huge effort done by the community, particularly for white and green ocean. So this has to be considered as opportunities more than as, uh, let's say, blocking point. Waste forecasting system has, appears to be advanced for each proposed spatial scale. And this is, uh, let's say, some, somehow um, a, a, quite evident from the uh, percentage that we got from the experts. On the other side, if we consider the end users, they uh, gave to us a positive, uh, let's say, uh, perception on the accessibility and accuracy, uh, as well as reliability of operational forecasting products. Of course, again, biological variables uh, is considered 
uh, in, their, uh, in the way they are available quite satisfactory. It's interesting to see that temperature is less, uh, let's say, uh, evaluated uh, than uh, currents. In this case, despite uh, the uh, essential ocean variables are provided usually by the same ocean uh, uh, universe and by the same engine. So this is quite uh, nice to understand, in particular, where temperature is, uh, let's say, not uh, uh, aligned with the other blue uh, variables. In uh, I mean, considering, of course, the expert the end user spawn. At the end, of course, uh, um, end users are uh, uh, prefers or uh, are more involved and use much more application, of course, in the sphere of the blue growth sector, like fisheries, aquaculture, aquaculture, ecological and ecosystem applications, but also early warning and disaster risk reduction. So all these uh, um, results will be, let's say, are. Uh, uh, going to be uh, more and more processing, and we hope that uh, will uh, uh, support you. If these initial results will support you in uh, planning your activities and uh, together to uh, target towards uh, the next phase for the definition of the uh, and the design of the operational ocean forecasting value chain. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Stefania. Really really interesting and, and I guess useful for us. It's very nice to see how we consider differently <laughs> the quality and accessibility of the data from experts and, and users point of view. Okay, but we need to move fast to the next presentation, which is from uh, Roman Sufic. And um, Roman will present us the, the, the Atlas. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Roland Zutik. I work at uh, Mercator Ocean International and uh, I'm working uh, with Enrique and the other rest of the team on the TCC. Uh, I hope you can see my screen here. Yes, perfect. Okay, all good. So I will present you today the Atlas of uh, Ocean Protection System that we are building currently for the website, but also the rest of the tools that we have available on the website. Um, so just to give you an overview, this uh, ocean prediction DCC website will really be the place to gather the community worldwide. Um, it will be officially launched in September to solve your question earlier. Um, but we will have an unofficial silent launch, let's say, in July to start building this. And uh, we uh, aim to open it to the overall public in September. And uh, as I said, we will have several tools allowing us to connect. First, the Atlas, which is only uh, not only for the operational ocean forecasting system, but also for individuals, organization, and downstream services. We will have also a forum, a news and events page, and resources to share. And of course, the, co the participation of the community is vital here, but is also um, the main reason why we are doing it to really uh, aim to be the place of exchanges. So, um, the Atlas uh, is, uh, will be a place, as I said, to locate four type of uh, elements, <laughs> let's say, uh, operational ocean forecasting system, individual institution, and downstream services. On the side, you can see how, um, a preview of how uh, the, uh, the questionnaire uh, will look like for filling a model. We, you will have many questions to make it very precise. And the idea, hopefully, is uh, to have an Atlas that will look like this. So the small dots will, um, the smaller the dot, the smaller the model will cover, uh, geographical coverage. Um, and it, uh, we will have on the side many uh, filters to really precise what type of uh, operational forecasting system we, we are looking for. Uh, whereas we search for a certain uh, area or certain variables. Um, and it will really be a source of information uh, for our activity and we, uh, we would like to engage uh, all um, everyone who has a, every institution having an operational progressive system to really start filling this. And this atlas will be uh, shared also embed on other websites such as the, the Moon Boost one. Uh, here is the a preview of the individual atlas. So we can see, uh, okay, this is just again a mock up, but we can see the dots where people are. Um, are the, the, what they are, and on the side uh, we can have the, the name, and uh, we can also give some information such as LinkedIn and uh, Twitter, for example. And uh, of course, we can filter them with many different parameters again. 
And if we click on someone, this is what we will, we will see. So we will see the general uh, interest, uh, the regional interest, sorry, uh, the organization the person belongs to, the country, the experience, the degree, the position, the working language, and some value that the person will have. So the idea is really for these to, to be able to find people. It will be the same for organization. We uh, organization can have their own page like this, and they will be linked to the system they have implemented and running. So it will really be uh, an interface to allow the community to add their information and to find each other and meet and also connect, which links to the next point, which is the forum. We will have a forum with many threads and many different channels, um, particularly, for example, something of matchmaking service, but also some general community announce, some uh, papers and uh, news uh, regarding the publication of uh, academic papers. We will have threads, of course, for the different regional teams, and also a technical forum uh, for, for example, if I go to the up here on the side, it's very small, I know, but uh, you can see that we aim to have one uh, channel per, per model. Uh, so here it's really about doing some uh, uh, best practice and team building and job solving uh, kind of interaction with people asking questions about specific things. And, um, the administration of some sections could be done by the regional teams because we will need some things to moderate to make sure the, the question and uh, all the jobs are, are solved. So this is remain to be seen how we can organize this, but um, the idea is really for the experts to be able to, to validate the, the, the replies of the, that help the people. Well, of course, we'll have a news page as well. So this will be a place for to connect uh, with the Ocean Decade Action uh, and programs such as 4C Ocean Critics, but also with the regional teams. We will have news from the region, so we aim to have uh, uh, the different regional teams sending us some news uh, that we will share this. Um, and it's really about to reach a transversal audience. Uh, as you may remember, during the kickoff meeting uh, back in uh, January, we had more than uh, 1,800 people registered, and we aim to really uh, involve all of these people to register to this website and be able to share with us their news. We will have special announcements, we will have news from Wicked Action, so this will be really um, a place to, to, to share the not only news, but also events, which is at the bottom of this page. We cannot see here because it's just a preview, but of course we aim to share events as well. So regional uh, teams will be um, invited also to share us uh, the event that they want us to, to forward. Uh, then we will have an ETUF wiki, so the ETUF guide that was, uh, that, that, that was launched uh, last year will be converted into the uh, wiki site for everyone to be able to contribute to it. Uh, the idea here is to have a consolidated version being published every three to four years. Uh, for example, we aim to have a new section on biological modeling, uh, higher traffic, and for a tsunami chapter as well. So this improvement will be first done through the wiki with uh, expert contributing and, of course, with uh, moderation, making sure the content is relevant. And uh, we will aim to improve some section for example, adding a river contribution. And uh, on the side, you can see how it will look like. So you can you will be able to click on contribute for chapter to chapter. Then you will be able to, to see here to choose the section you would like to edit and then submit your text, submit your reference, your figures. And that will all go through a moderation in our time before uh, being uh, uh, told that your section has been approved. And the idea is really to use this set of guide to do capacity development activities, but also to really make sure the expertise we have is shared and also continuously developed among each other. Uh, I, again, uh, from the taken back from the, the kickoff meeting, during the kickoff meeting, we had a virtual halls, exhibition halls on different things, particularly on the uh, one, one decade hall, one downstream service hall and one um, operational ocean forecasting system hall and these three halls will really be uh, imported directly onto our website with a similar uh, looking at what we had during the kickoff so this on the side you can see how it will look like and the idea is really for 
uh, the ocean prediction to showcase the existing systems uh, on a more detailed page with uh, providing some content, some documents, some information. And this can be updated on demand. So if you want uh, to modify some information or if you want to add a new system, this will be able, uh, this will be possible by asking the moderators. And I think that's uh, yeah, that's it for what the, the website will look like. But really, uh, I would like to, to ask you to be ready in uh, September to contribute to start discussing on the on the forum, maybe taking uh, over the regional team uh, channel for the Med Sea, uh, Med Mediterranean Sea and Black Sea, and also to be ready to contribute to the Atlas, which will be uh, the really important place if we want to gather and to map the community of uh, ocean prediction. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Roman. Very, very useful information. Um, yeah, so we, we wait for the website, we wait for the Atlas to contribute, of course. It will be for us the opportunity to update our uh, information on the modeling capability in the Mediterranean Sea, of course. So now I guess that we have finished, we can close the first session. And then um, we move to the session two, which will be, let's say, managed by Mercator. We will have an interaction section. So, Enrique, I leave you the floor. So, thank you very much, Emanuela. And thank you to all for the really great presentations. The idea now is uh, we are going to have some, some nice minutes with an interactive activity uh, that we are somehow going to test today. And the idea is that we repeat this with a, a modification, with improvements during our uh, meeting after the summer in Morocco during our really uh, kickoff meeting. So uh, this is this is for having some, some nice time today and for checking if uh, everything is, is fine with respect to, to you and if you want to add additional ideas to this interactive uh, activity. Uh, then we will have some time. Uh, I, I ask you to deliver fast on the interactive activity. So we have some time. We will try to make it a little bit short because it's a kind of experiment. And we will uh, make sure that we have some time for discussion. The discussion will be consist on doubts about the presentation and also general doubts about the collaboration agreement that we have submitted, ideas on how to improve the collaboration agreement, ideas on how to improve our uh, Mongoose Modeling Working Group or the regional team on DCC. Everything is, is up, will be open for the, for the open discussion. We will ask during the open discussion you to raise the hand and we, I will give the floor to the different people as uh, you uh, raise the hand. So once this is said, I, I would like to ask Ben Sand to, to launch the first interactive activity, which is based on Slido. Uh, please join uh, slido.com and use this reference to, to join our uh, interactive activity. And we can move maybe to the next one because you, you will keep the information there. Yeah, you still have your slide or number here. So we have a series of five questions for you that we advanced to you on the on the mails. And the first one is, which are the main applications that ocean forecasting is having today on the region? So we'll give a little bit of time. I have to say that yesterday with, with Karim and others, we did the same exercise for the uh, Africa regional team that we had yesterday. It was a full team with um, 50 persons uh, in, and it was very, very nice, very participative, and some very good ideas pop out uh, out of this uh, exercise. So it was not a, only a cosmetic uh, exercise, but really there was very good contributions from the people in Africa uh, to uh, give ideas that I think we are going really to use. For example, we have very good ideas with respect to capacity development that we can could use in the future. So we are starting to, to see uh, the first uh, replies, search and rescue, uh, wave forecasting, I guess. That wave forecasting is uh, really for... Um, uh, uh, 
dynamic risk uh, reduction. Ports is a good, uh, a clear application. Oil spill is a clear application. Coastal management. To uh, downscale for uh, high resolution services. Ports is gaining some weight. Uh, some search forecasting. Again, dynamic risk reduction is gaining weight. Search and rescue. So the very well-known and classical application. Oil spill seems to be very important in this, in this case. It was curious in Africa, it was mainly about, so it, there are regional differences which, which are quite interesting. In Africa, it was very much about biological issues. Fisheries were very important. Uh, and it was very interesting to see that it's, it's not an unexpected result because the economy in Africa is very much depending on, on fisheries. Here we have aquaculture, which is related to that. Water quality, coastal flooding, again, so again, many, many uh, replies. Uh, so it's like families I can see here. One family is related to the dynamic risk reduction with a, a oil spill, sorry, a, a storm surge oil spill, uh, other families about water quality with uh, uh, water quality, bathing water quality, for example, marine health. And finally, there's a third, like a third family, which is about uh, coastal management, where you have uh, marine framework, coastal management, uh, etc. So it's very nice, not, not at all surprising, but well, we have been working on this community for years. So it's a strange that it's not surprising for, for us what we are getting. And oil spill is the main one. We can move to the second question. If you have not replied, you can still reply to that one. Because it will be very interesting to, to analyze the difference between one region and another. So, even if it is because we have been working on this area for a lot of years, even if it's not interesting, it's not surprising for us, it will be very relevant to see the difference with, with other regions that we are less familiar with. So this is a good one. Which are the main gaps for ocean forecasting today in the region? Where do you think we should stress our efforts in the future? So. Not surprisingly, resolution is on the first one. Land sea interactions and river input very related. Arriving high resolution biogeochemistry, again, high resolution. That's a good one. Observation in the South Mediterranean. This is really something we are we are lacking. It is a huge imbalance between uh, uh, North and South, as you all very well know at Mongoose community. And this is being uh, highlighted. So atmospheric coupling, ocean coupling, high resolution atmospheric models. I guess this is also linked with uh, the comments of uh, resolution. So if we need a high coastal resolution or resolution or coastal resolution, we will, we will later work a little bit this cloud because many of the words sometimes want to say the same thing without with different work. We have resolution, high coastal resolution, coastal resolution, all these things is the same thing. We are saying that we don't have the right resolution near the coast. And we are saying, and this is also linked with the need of improvement of lands in direction and river uh, input. Data simulation, obviously data simulation is, is a gap because it's usually only carried out on the large scale, on the MedMFC, basically, on the large scale model as in, in routine. So that's the uh, high resolution and the data simulation is not a, a operationally solved problem in our community. It can be done in some specific examples, but it's not in, done in routine by, by all of us. Most of the time, we don't have the observations to do that, to start with, and this links with Again, the uh, observation in the South Med comments, coastal data simulation, another one on data simulation, HF radar data simulation, another one on data simulation. 
Again, we don't have too many HF radars, but the ones that we have will be interesting to assimilate. Um, very interesting work recently I've seen uh, about HF radar uh, improving uh, ocean forecasting thanks to artificial intelligence. So that's, uh, that's another thing to, to explore in the future. Total sea level at the coast. Okay, that's a difficult problem, which is related with, with the problems associated to leveling and so on. So we have a wide, wide uh, variety of uh, problems here to be uh, addressed. I like uncertainty in forecasting because this is very good. This is also related with the ensemble forecasting. I may be missing somebody saying ensemble forecasting as one of the, of the gaps, but an ensemble is needed and it helped with the with uncertainty. So let's go to next, which is, which are the activities you think ocean prediction DCC should focus to improve the situation of ocean forecasting in the region? This is where we start to be selfish and we start to ask you for ideas. And this is where we want to learn from you after you hear all the description of, what is ocean prediction DCC? Why we are searching this alliance with uh, uh, Mongoose uh, Modeling Working Group? After you have all this mind in your, you have all these ideas in your mind, what do you think could be the activities that we should focus to improve? Common form of verification. I like very much this one because it's really related with which we explain also shared tools is very much related to what we explain about this change in a scenario and simple forecasting. We can uh, work in this line through this recommendation of tools and standards and best practices. Connect Southern European Six. This is interesting because I think that the steering teams could really help a lot uh, to do that if we have uh, also to connect with the, with the Southern Mediterranean, and we have the steering team at Africa, and we have the steering team at Europe with the same roles. They can talk to each other, and uh, it will help very much to connect both uh, sides of the of the Mediterranean. Planning activities. This is related with the uh, capacity development uh, plans that we have to. Uh, build. So the situation today with capacity development is that for this year, we want to build uh, the plans for capacity development, uh, considering different uh, budget scenarios that we could have at the end. And uh, depending on these scenarios, we will be able to do more or less because we still don't know very well the budget envelope for the, for the following years. But certainly, <clears throat> the, the community on the Mediterranean Ocean modeling has been uh, exemplary uh, for the last three decades and uh, has been pioneering since uh, um, three decades ago, the activities. So uh, this community has to be considered when uh, talking about training from other to other parts of the world. And the example of the Mediterranean should be extended to other parts of the world. The, the, the kind of integration that has been done through Copernicus and through Mongoose. So budget to foster collaboration, I think that will that that, that maybe will be will be a difficult in the short term, but who knows in the long term. Com common framework for dissemination, common framework for verification. This is absolutely aligned with our ideas. Give more importance to local and regional groups. This is why we are having this meeting. And funding source for collaboration visits, that might be possible the, on, on the framework of the regional teams. So we have still one, being an ignitor for the downstream services. This is really good because this is exactly what we pretend to be. And we want to, to be that and also a, a connector of the downstream services, allowing the connection of the uh, tools and the connection of the outcomes to a wider uh, framework. So let's go for the next question. I think all the, all the answers are really aligned, except maybe for the ones 
on, on the budget uh, with uh, with what we presented and with our uh, capabilities in the future. What kind of capacity development and social interactive activities do you believe are needed in the region? So here we go for to, to, to understand what do you think is needed in the region, but to be honest, from my point of view, this community is more in a situation today to provide capacity development to other regions around the globe than needed of capacity development because the, the capacity on the Mediterranean is, is outstanding to my from my point of view. But nevertheless, what do you think is needed? All right. I like really very much this first one, ocean literacy targeting, targeting decision makers. This is amazing because uh, we have decided that our ocean literacy will be focused in targeting decision makers. So ocean literacy, there was no presentation today on ocean literacy, but ocean literacy is very broad and you can do ocean literacy for schools, you can do ocean literacy for many things, but we have decided that our target for ocean literacy should be the policy makers, the decision makers. So this is this is amazing that you launch this uh, immediately because this is uh, somehow uh, confirming our ideas and our plans. Moving towards impact forecasting, good dissemination. Okay, good dissemination. This is it will be in our hands, in your hands, because we are building. The tools, I think that the tools that Roman explained it are fantastic. We are uh, doing all our best to create a good framework for, for uh, helping uh, to support uh, the communication and the dissemination of, of the work. But then we will need your contribution to feed these tools to, uh, to populate this with uh, news to populate this with activity on the forum and so on. Good dissemination, nevertheless, is a little bit, uh, it can be in two directions. It could be good dissemination of the, or it can be good dissemination of the data. Uh, with respect to the activities, this is the web page, the tools that we are uh, doing. Data, this is the work we want to do on uh, standards, tools, and uh, are going this new scenario for ocean forecasting that will permit, for example, to do a dissemination through the digital twins. Socially, I don't really understand what means moving towards. I think I got it. Impact forecasting means not only not only uh, uh, describing the essential ocean variables, but describing the impact variables are going to take and are going to produce in the, for example, in infrastructure in or in a beach or somewhere. I think this is very good. And with respect to that, uh, I have to tell you that we recently added to the Ocean Forecasting Co-Design team a section on indicators that is somehow linked to that. But this is this is a very good point, and maybe we have not thought enough about this. So thank you for for this idea, because I think this is this is very good. Downstream uptake should be enhanced. Okay, I cannot agree more. And training local authorities. This is related with a previous comment on the ocean literacy, which is which is great. We are. Waiting for one participant that is still writing, and we will move to the to the next question. I think we have to move to the next question. Please, if you have not finished, keep on typing because it will be recorded and it will be useful on the final analysis. So let's move to next question. Do you think observations? Okay, I know. I think I will know the answer that you will give to this one. And, if observation from the from the region, if available, are sufficient to constrain the ocean models and produce a great forecast. If not, what kind of observations are we missing? So this is the most technical of the family of questions, and this is where you can give your uh, idea of what, how is how is how good is our observing system, and how fit for purposes 
related to our ocean modeling activities. So the first reply, again, a surprising observation in the uh, Southern Med Sea. Black Sea, similar situation. Rivers, that's very good. I guess there's a problem with somebody that replied one but appears in several lines. I guess this is river rates, data, concentration flow. This is my reconstruction of, of this one. So basically, is we don't have river flow data. Observation in straits. Well, that's very, very important. Choke, choke points. Griever is getting more and more uh, importance. Continued measurement. Again, river mouse. Yeah, given the given the condition of the hydrography of the Mediterranean, is not is not strange. Salinity very difficult to have measurements of salinity. Very scarce ones. So it's not strange that this is popping up. More currents, we need more ATCP and more HF radars. Biogeochemical observations, not strange at all. Maybe I will ask the person that, that uh, provide his contribution and need to split in several words if he can, if it's possible for him to arrange this because it's creating a little bit of noise. So basically, currents, salinity, rivers, and biogeochemical in terms of uh, in terms of variables, current salinity and biogeochemical. Then in terms of things that we need to observe, it's the rivers in different in different uh, uh, flavors. In terms of uh, observations, you, you can see uh, other words related to the rivers. And then in terms of geography, we have the Black Sea and the Southern Mediterranean. So essential ocean variables, currents, salinity, and biogeochemical. Type of things we want to see is the rivers mainly. We, we see also deep water and we'll see also wind and we see also a bathymetry. And then in terms of regions, Southern Mediterranean, and a Black Sea. So yeah, very, very nice to see that uh, there's no big surprise, but there is a really, really large concern about the rivers, which is which is great to, to acknowledge. And this is something that maybe, for example, on the, as was mentioned by Roman, we were not careful enough on the first edition of the Tooth's Guide and we will correct for the second edition. So this is it. I hope that you have found this interesting. And uh, the idea is with your contributions in the future, we could uh, improve this exercise and repeat it on the meeting on Morocco that I hope it will be hybrid meeting. And we could have also the view of the users in this exercise. If you want to suggest us uh, additional questions for this or additional ideas on how to do this, uh, we are ready to, to listen to this uh, once that you have seen how, how the exercise is planned. So it's now the time to, for the open session. We have, we are quite well on time. We have 25 minutes before we finish our expected time. So please, if you have questions uh, about the presentations, questions about our connection, please raise your hand virtually so we can see that. And I'll give you the floor once you raise your hand. I see no questions up to now. It's I cannot believe you don't have questions, for example, for the presentation, the Stefania presentation on, on the quality of the services, showing these nice results about the different, uh, let's say, perception uh, of users and uh, experts on our systems. 
or any question about how we are going to build all this thing or the meeting on, on Morocco? Maybe, can I ask a question to Stefania, <laughs> since we are here? Um, is it possible from the polls to have an idea on the, the answers from the community around the Mediterranean Sea? Is it possible to extract this information so to have a specific overview on our of regions? Course. Of course, absolutely. The, the answer is yes for... Uh, um, let's say to complement uh, the experts view we can uh, extract from the end users uh, as you are uh, mentioning the countries that are in the mediterranean black sea region and uh, that would be definitely a nice exercise also to replicate uh, for the other uh, uh, for the other regions because uh, as i show you the coverage i mean we got uh, uh, quite a good number of answers so we believe we can, uh, let's say, build uh, something uh, more uh, regional oriented in terms of uh, result, absolutely. Also to, let's say, have an additional level of uh, uh, evaluation of such uh, uh, results. Um, that's a very nice uh, uh, suggestion. Thanks. Uh, and maybe useful then uh, in, the, in the next uh, meeting, in the that you are planning in the Mongoose meeting, we can show this because uh, the exercise was quite, uh, let's say, interesting. It's revealing uh, uh, some uh, paths where we can uh, work together. Uh, and as I was mentioning before, uh, the results, uh, even the critical one, uh, should be taken really as positive because uh, uh, positive in the sense that uh, there is really the window to do more, to improve and to collaborate. Uh, at uh, regional levels for uh, uh, improving the ocean forecasting value chains. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So we don't have uh, questions. <laughs> we were oh, feedback. We, we were extremely clear <laughs> and accurate in our plans. So can I, can I uh, launch the question if somebody of you is interested uh, in uh, to, to contribute on how do you see the whole implication of a Mongoose Modeling Working Group with the DCC, if you feel this is, this is an interesting idea, or if you feel that uh, something could be improved on the collaboration agreement, this kind of contribution is that uh, what we are looking here today to hear from you. Okay. I have to say that Africa meeting was more participative yesterday. Uh, if I can add the comment, I mean, uh, surely, uh, the fact that uh, Med and Black Sea are, uh, let's say, connected uh, within this, uh, this team uh, would, uh, let's say, uh, make uh, a, an additional level of uh, improvement to see the continuous uh, uh, way of we are modeling the Southern European seas. So I guess that uh, many opportunities uh, in terms of modeling uh, will, uh, will arrive uh, thanks to the synergies between the two basins. Uh, with their specificities and the peculiarities that uh, can be considered also a challenge from the modeling point of view, being two different uh, uh, bases at all. So uh, the, the activities would be really interesting, will be really interesting to be, let's say, followed uh, within Mongoose and also, I think, in this uh, specific regional team, together with all the uh, collateral uh, uh, activities from the ocean literacy, uh, the digital twins opportunities and so on. So I think that, uh, I mean, personally, it's a good way to catalyze the effort and strength uh, the synergies and uh, share the best practice, share the, the approaches uh, in the modeling framework. Uh, so I think that uh, 
and here the community that uh, the participants of today are, uh, let's say, really right part of the of the active scientific community, R&D community in both basins. So, so I guess that is really a challenge. It is. Christian, you have the, the floor now. Um, thank you. I'm Christian Farim. I'm, I'm new to this group because I will be probably in CNR PISMA delegate uh, after Gail going retired. Um, I'm, I really appreciate this effort. I'm not so deep in it, so I, I need some time to, to dig it. Um, I was wondering if with this uh, chance that we have uh, to improve our system, uh, there is also the idea of to simplify somehow. I mean, uh, I do have just part of experience in uh, ocean forecasting the Mediterranean. Uh, also looking to the um, survey that also uh, Emanuela presented. I mean, there are, I don't know if it's the part, the regional sea which has um, the highest number of uh, forecasting system. So um, how can a hand user manage such uh, amount of information? Are we going also to try to simplify somehow putting models together or forecasting system together? Uh, this, is, this is a good point. Uh, uh, the, the fact that we're going to uh, promote that we uh, deliver together, it's going to help users to find in a single entry point the different solutions that they have available. And so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of work that is linked with your question and has to be done in the future. On one hand, you have the, the digital twins that will somehow be a, a integrator of information from different sources and will provide it in a way that it will be easier to use and easier to find what if scenarios and doing additional things comes to, to this integration that will be done in the digital twins. On the other hand, if we look on the presentation by, by Stefania, we have seen that the uh, uh, experts uh, give not a very good uh, qualification to some of the systems. So it will be very, very useful to have these systems integrated into single points using common validation tools and even more uh, ready to do ensemble, multimodal ensemble to uh, explore uncertainty, which is linked to some of the comments that were also that were also done uh, by, by some of you. Yeah, so I, I was thinking. I was thinking about that. Uh, like for waves, I mean, how many wave models are running on the Mediterranean Sea? I think that people mostly tend to look to the regional system, like Italians tend to look to the Italian model, Greece as well, and Spain as well. But uh, for sure, multi-model ensemble, at least for part of the region, yeah, there, there, can, be, can be a not a solution, but can be an uh, appreciative approach. Now, this, this is certainly way forward. The digital twins will, will help a lot on that. And there's a very nice exercise on that that was done uh, at Puerto del Estado by, by Begoña and several others of doing exactly that with sea level on the Mediterranean, taking into consideration the different solutions and doing multimodal ensemble. And, and you see that the, it's, it's very nice to see that the multimodal ensemble is better than any of the individual solution. And on top of that, you have a, a uncertainty. Uh, 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 on the on the on the forecast, and uh, on top of that, you are doing that with solutions that are already existing, as you are saying, Christian. Yeah, yeah, we are doing similar in the Adriatic, much easier with the waves than with yeah, the it's always uh, it's always easier with oh, waves, isn't it? Thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, Christian. Something something I would like to stress is that in the future, Emanuela and. Uh, uh, myself will have to populate this steering team. Maybe, maybe Manuela, you can share your screen and, and explain again the positions. Uh, we will certainly uh, will contact some of you to 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 ask to be part of this uh, steering team. But if you want to to proceed in advance and volunteer, please send an email to to Emanuela or to me so we can start populating this steering team. 
I have to say that for some regions, the steering team is completely built now, especially for those in in Africa, sorry, in in Asia, in Africa is almost finished also. Uh, amazingly, we are going very, very fast in, in Africa with everything. So the steering team for Africa is formed for uh, Indian seas is completely formed also. So it will be great if we can do it also for the Mediterranean and we can find a expert willing to volunteer helping us in these topics. The amount of work is not expected, is not very high, certainly not at the beginning because for this year, we are just building the teams. And then I don't expect a huge load of work, but it's it's more a coordination work, participation in papers, participation in, in, in collaboration efforts. So it's nothing to be, and it's not, it's not that you are signing a contract for life if you are volunteering for this. So please let us know if, if you want to, to be a part of the steering teams in any of these uh, uh, roles by emailing Emanuela or emailing uh, me or emailing both of us. So this is this is it. Yes, so, we, we, but, yeah, go ahead. We, we just have a, <clears throat> a rough uh, idea on um, the experts uh, in the Mediterranean Sea since we have uh, this uh, shared Excel file that uh, is listing all the experts uh, and uh, each one, if you want uh, to, to also provide there your information because you have already uh, all these categories in the in that file. Uh, if you would like to fill it with your uh, information, then maybe we can also reach you uh, following the different fields of expertise. So we can categorize already some experts uh, who already provided this information. They're the one that uh, have been used to build this, uh, uh, let's see, the here it is, yeah, this graphic. Okay, so this is this is the next step. And I think that since I don't see additional uh, comments or people wanting to, to say something, I want to, to finish uh, before giving the floor to Emanuela to, to close to for thanking you for, for being here. Thank you for your participation. And uh, let's start working on all this uh, stuff and let's start preparing the, the meeting for that will be the first regional team meeting to be uh, hosted by uh, Maroc. So, Emanuela, you want to, to close the meeting, please? Yes, thanks a lot to everybody. Thanks for attending the meeting. I hope uh, now. Sorry, I, I forgot it would be nice if we connect the cameras and we make a family picture. It will be great if you can open your web. Thanks. I'm so sorry. Again. Um, I may ask if the presentation will be available to, to the group. Sure. Thanks. So you will receive soon um, more information on the Mongoose uh, and the Ocean Prediction DCC regional team meeting in November. You will be asked for uh, actively participate and provide abstracts and so on. So in July, more or less, you will receive more information to, on that. I hope uh, you enjoyed the meeting. You have now a more clear overview on the ocean prediction <laughs> regional team for the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, as already mentioned, we will keep in touch uh, to ask for your involvement uh, in the steering team. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank Ciao. you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.